Good morning, Dr. Terrell. Good morning, Solomon. I'm trying to get back into focus here. If I tell it to focus on my hands up close, it does not do the greatest of jobs, does it? Come on. Come on. You can do it. Ah, uh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Come on, you can do it. There I am. I just have to stay with say stay at the same distance. Oh, my teeth look so yucky. Oh well, what the hell? So, um, how's everybody doing this morning? Good. Let me, let me bring up the chat thingy so that people can chat because I know nobody wants to say anything. We're doing good. Good, Kareem. I like that. I like that. And Dylan, it is normal to be tired. It is normal to be tired. <laughs> it is so normal. And... Um, Is there anybody here who is waiting for me for advising, for some advising issue? Diane, maybe. Okay, okay. Let's see here. Let me try sharing a screen. With you all. Hey, Dr. Terrell. Yes. Kareem. Are there uh, videos for HPLC and fluorescence? Ah, there sure are. There sure are. There's for, for HPLC. For fluorescence, maybe not. But for HPLC, there is. Um, and uh, that one, I am. Uh, it's actually been viewed a bunch of times recently, but I don't know by who. <laughs> I just, I, I was just like uploading something as, oh, what's this thing? And oh, this HPLC video has been viewed a bunch of times. It turns out it's perfect. It's just the data analysis, which is all I want you guys to do. And it's a data analysis for HPLC. And it's all boilerplate. You know, okay. you guys just, don't have to do anything just like uh just be robots and follow the instructions you know and that will get you through it you know and then Perfect. when you're done when you're done if you have energy you can look back and say oh my god i just got uncertainty intervals through a calibration curve and you can think what does that mean what does that mean? And you can realize, oh, geez, this is just intra-assay nonsense. You know, this is all within a given assay. Mm -hmm. You know, this is just all how much this calibration curve screws up my data. Okay. And not, and not even in the, the accuracy. The video is probably not prominently advertised yet <laughs> but i i promise i will get it to you i promise i will get it to you <laughs> sounds good thank you i promise i promise i will do it because you know you know what why my promises are are why it's hard for me to keep promises because i make promises why? at 7 33 a.m i make them at 7 33 a.m right mm. And at that point in time, everything is bright and possible. And then mm -hmm. I give an hour and 15 minute lecture. Then I give mm -hmm. potentially a three hour lab. And then I have lunch and then I have a meeting. And then I'm dog tired and I just want to go home. You know, mm -hmm. I do not want to look for my video and post it mm -hmm. to Canvas. I'm too lazy. So, okay. Well, I, I understand that. <laughs> so I might need a reminder. <laughs> oh, should I email you? I might need you? a reminder. You please, please email me and remind me, please. 
Okay. That would yeah, be so helpful. Good. That would be so helpful. Yeah. Now, for sure. And for it's all on you, lessons. Kareem. <laughs> okay, yes. I, I know that Kareem as a class reminder. Sounds I good. do too. I do too. Yay. Yay, Kareem. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dr. Terrell, you what have about another job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so fluorescence is described pretty well in the lab manual. I mean, they're all in the stupid lab manual. Sometimes the lab manual asks you to do a little bit too much. And in the case of HPLC, it mm -hmm. asks you to do too much. And uh, fluorescence, it actually has a picture you're supposed to fill in, but I don't really care about mm. that anymore. So. You guys can skip that if you want to, but um, uh, so wait. So you're saying follow so, the lab manual, or yeah, yeah, you can follow the lab manual, and and it's basically you know you got to import. Oh, oh, Casey found it. Found the YouTube. Hold on, just a sec. Let me. Oh, see. is that it? Cool. I think so. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if it has my patented splashy intro screen. We oh God, no. Okay. Yeah. Is that not it? Oh. That it is. is it, that is it, that is it, that is it, yes. So it's got my trademark hemming and hawing and pausing and umming. I like that. No one else should like that, but I do somehow. Uh, I've actually I have to share this so you guys can see it, right? So let's see here. Uh, right here, it's this guy right here, and um, I will um, I will grab it here. I think. Uh, wait, no, that's not how we get it. No thanks. Go away. I gotta subscribe to myself here. What does it say about someone who won't even subscribe to themselves? Open, save, share. Hmm. Oh, well. I can't figure out how to get the, the little link. It's normally, oh, here it is. It's probably here, right? No. Normally it's here, right? Oh, sure. Duh. Share. Duh. Let's see here. I'll copy this and then I will, I will make sure that this is prominently on um, canvas for y'all to find. And then, I don't know, I'll do something like that. Okay. So now PowerPoint, back to PowerPoint. Let's converse about why bands spread. So, um, in this case, what we mean by band, ah, no, let me put this as a question. What do we mean by band, Casey? I don't know. I thought of a, a, the gel electrophoresis bands. Yeah, that's so cool. That's right. The, each little line, each little line is a band because it's like a marching band and it has tubas and trombones and drums. No, I'm just kidding. It's not like a band. It's just, if there's a bunch of molecules that are all the same and they all have the same interaction, so they move more or less together, right? And the, the, the question here is why don't they move exactly together? Why do they spread out? By right? surprise. And so let's look, what by surprise? By size. Well, they could spread by size, but the thing is like, there, there's a distinction to be made here, right? Because last time we spent a whole bunch of time determining, oops, here, here we go. Determining what factors go into TR, the retention time, right? 
And, you know, there's, and there's, you know, this is all a bunch of nonsense here, of course. This is just thermodynamic. It's just inner relationships between things, right? <clears throat> but, um, but basically there's, a, there's an equilibrium constant KD. Oops, I don't know, KDVS, whatever. There's an equilibrium relation that a given molecule has with a column. A given molecule has with a given column and stationary phase, right? And that KD value is what determines the retention time, right? So like you say, size or whatever. This is all about what is KD, right? Um, however, where we have moved from there is from what determines KD to the question, why aren't all KD identical? Right? Right. Why, why don't, why aren't bands extremely thin and extremely tall, right? Why aren't all the molecules packed into a single space? And obviously they're not all gonna pack into a single space, right? But let's just look at the reasons why they're not um, all in a single space, right? First of all, um, everybody likes a sort of a framework to come, to have this conversation, right? So we're gonna say that the variances, each, each broadening mechanism produces a standard deviation or a variance, right? And the variance is sum. This is what this means. And what does it mean when the, 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 the width, sigma, sums with all the other widths as sigma squared. What does this bloody guy down here mean? This means that the largest term, the largest sigma values Uh, dominate, right? So um, anyway, it's also, it's Pythagorean, right? So sigma, this is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? Where sigma observed is the hypotenuse, you know? So if you have a small one and a large one, it's like having a small side and a large side on a triangle. The hypotenuse is gonna be a little bit larger than the, lar than the largest side, right? And this is, this is a cube. This is a, the corner of a cube, right? Very clever, no? I think very clever, yes, good. Okay, so now broadening outside of the column. And this is simply the fact that you cannot inject you know, all the molecules at the exact same space. So this is like, duh. And this is, you know, it's not, normally it's not a limiting factor because um, there's so much other junk going on. But um, uh, like if you have a delta V value, you can sort of divide it by 12 and that will give you something like sigma squared and, uh, injection, right? I do not know where the hell they get that, right? But that's one source of band broadening. The next one is the tubing, right? And here's a long ass, scary, stupid, gosh darn equation. That means nothing except that longer tubing gives more variance. Right? 
Diffusion co coefficient, you can't control. Flow, you want that high. I is the diameter, you can't control that. And then it's like D to the fourth, right? So, you know, um, probably you want the diameter to be small, you know? And that basically that's the way it is nowadays. Super tiny, super tiny uh, tubes, yeah? So we've got um, broadening outside, we've got injection, tubing, and then a stupid exercise based on that. And then stupid exercise based on that. And then now we're getting on to Uh, let's see here. Now we're getting on to the Van Diemter equation, right? And this, the Van Diemter equation is a classic analytical chemical um, expression. And it's the single thing that I want to get across to y'all today. And uh, so we're, we'll, we'll have some uh, going arounds about this. And uh, the Van Diemter equation um, it's real simple. It's, it says, what is the plate height? So the plate height is the, um, the shittiness of the separation, right? So if your shittiness is 12, is that better or worse than your shittiness being two? It's worse. Yes, it's worse. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so you want your shittiness to be as small as possible, right? <laughs> so where is the best in this green curve? Where is the optimum? Just somebody say it because I'm going to go crazy. At that little dip at the bottom? where everything's low. Yay, exactly. So the, the minimum shittiness is right here. I can say that four letter word. I'm allowed, I think. Anyway, you can complain to the Dean. I just, I just, I'm trying to make, it's like it's important to see this for what it is, right? That larger values are worse than smaller values, right? So now, um, uh, so that's the vertical axis. The horizontal axis is linear velocity, right? And that's the velocity of, uh, God, I'm not sure if it's solvent or solute. Um, but let's say it's sol uh, solvent, right? No, nah, it's probably solute. But anyways, so that's how quickly something gets through the column, right? So... Um, Oops, can you guys see or hear me? Yeah. My computer's doing something. Okay, good. Yeah, My computer's yeah, sort of freaking out here. Good, good, excellent, excellent. Okay, so um, thank you. So the uh, so if solvent velo velocity is high, what does that mean about the time for the separation? A small time? Right, exactly. So this is short time. And what if the velocity goes to zero? How long will your separation take? Forever. Yes, it will take forever. So this is like an asymptote here. This is like the Paleozoic separation, right? And this is like the one that blew by so fast, nothing really separated, right? Then right around in here, there's an optimum, okay? So this means that for a given, for a given solute, right, for a given analyte, like let's say caffeine, right, you can go too slow. If you take a long time, if you pump it really slowly, the bands will not come out optimally sharp. Does that make sense? 
I mean, it should, because like, ultimately, if you extend that idea, they'll come out, you know, like, it'll take a year to elute the stupid peak. And it's just not going to look right. You know, it's just going to look like crap. So as you go faster, then the peaks are going to get narrower, right? And then as you go faster and faster, the peaks are going to get narrower. They're going to get to an optimum narrowness. And then most likely they're going to start to tail. They're going to start to get asymmetric and they're going to start to tail. And we'll discuss that later, but the main thing is that they're broad, they're narrow, and then they're broad again, right? This is all by simply adjusting the pumping rate, the speed of the um, stationary phase. So you may ask yourself, where the hell did they get these experimental data from? And I can ask you, I can answer you that these are from a gas chromatograph. These are from GC. Because GC has tons of plates. A good capillary GC will produce 100,000 uh, theoretical plates. That means that the height equivalent of the theoretical plate will be very small and the column will be very long. So there will be a lot of potential peaks that you can resolve in a given chromatogram. So let, let me do a little um, illustration here. So when I, when I get my, um, I'm, I'm moving to a new platform called OBS where I'm going to be able to, I'm going to have a, uh, a little uh, button and I'm going to push a button to use my different screens. Won't that be cool? Okay, so what was I going to say here? Um, damn. Okay, so, so here's a GC column. The damn thing is 10 meters long. 10 meters long, and it's like, you know, maybe 10 micrometers in inter inner diameter, right? So it's a million times longer than it is wide. And this thing can produce a bunch of peaks, right? So let's go from the world's crappiest separation to a good separation. Right? This is crap. This is okay. This is great. Right? This is signal and time. <coughs> and this is this is actually fairly typical of GC. GC, you can just run them really fast, you know? And um, in GC, you can actually cover the um, entire range of uh, this entire range of peak qualities, right? Where you can go from crappy to good and back to crappy again. I mean, actually, I don't know. Uh, to getting worse again, shall we say, right? Um, and uh, 
one thing, one another thing I'd like to say about this is that um, only in GC can you go from uh, all the way through the descending and through to the ascending part of this curve. It so happens that in LC, at least in reverse phase HPLC and UPLC, for example, you are always on the left-hand side of this curve. Does that make sense? Oops. So for HPNL, HPLC, you are typically only on the left side of this curve. So you can have like the 1990s version of our HPLCs and they might be up here around 10. And then our, look at our, you know, our uh, 2021 version and we might be down here around six, right? But if we could improve this separation, how would we do it? How could we improve the separation on our existing machine simply by adjusting one knob? You could be the hero. You could just walk up and turn that knob, nip, and you're the boss. Suddenly you're the boss of the whole company. What knob would you turn, Casey? I don't know. Ah, ah, come on. Okay, it's open now. Whoever gets this answer gets the I'm awake prize. Did so you restate what I'm saying the knob that does? Oh. Oh yeah, okay, so, so I'm not gonna say what the knob does, but I'm gonna say that from 1990 to 2021, we've gone from say 11 to seven here, right? And by turning one knob, you can improve the separation again. Can what knob would you turn? Can we change the plate height? Yes, we can. How? How can we change the plate height? We're gonna turn one knob. Do we have adjustable yes. length? No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Sometimes you can use a longer call and improve separation. Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes it doesn't work. I mean, everything has to spend a minimum amount of time on column to separate. But that optimum has already been worked out, let's say. That's a good answer, though. That's a very good answer. So where is the best... What is the best separation that you can get on this plot? Cindy, guide my mouse cursor. That's right around that linear velocity around one-ish on here, millimeters per second. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Around one millimeter per second, right? I said that uh, 1990 we were here, 2020, we're here. What can we do to continue improving? Can we increase our linear velocity a little more? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And how do we do that, Kareem? Uh, I don't know. Oh, come now. Can you increase Come now, pattern? come now. Yes, now we're getting there. But you don't actually increase the pressure with the knob. 
you, incle you increase something more directly related to this plot, which is, what, what can you increase with the knobs on the front panel of the um, software on the HPLC? I've seen Low the rate. HPLC one time. Oh. <laughs> Kareem, 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 what did you say? Flow rate. Yes. Kareem scratches past Casey and Cindy and, and, and trips them both before they get to the finish line and then runs triumphantly across. That's just how I play. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> it was more of a relay race. Yeah, there I'm, we go. That's what much more of a relay race. I definitely would not. Have I gone like that, that. I like without that. pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Kareem cool. just took us home. So basically, what I, what I'm saying is that over two decades, we 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 almost doubled the efficiency, simply by increasing the flow rate. Right, that's the main thing we did. The pipes got a little bit thinner too, but mainly the flow rate just got a lot better, right? Now, why can't we just keep going down this plot though? What's the problem? Well, how are we changing and, the flow rate? Yeah, we just make the pistons go faster, right? Okay. It's actually a fixed volume pump, yeah? And they have pistons that, that go linearly here, right? And, um, and, but something happens when the flow rate gets too high. What, what, what's, what happens, Gianluca? Come on, Gianluca. Um, maybe they don't. Pistons. I have yeah. the idea, but I yeah. can't put it into yeah. words. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So let's say you were at the pump. You were at the pump, right? And you're pumping. And I say, pump faster, Jean Mocha. Pump faster. Pump. And you're like, I'm pumping faster, Dr. T. How fast do I have to go? And I say, pump faster. And then what happens is that the column starts to what? It starts to shake. Explode. Shake, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Shake, explode, exactly. <laughs> basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. It basically, you, you. What happens to the pressure as you pump faster, Jean Luca? It increases. Yes, it gets ridiculous, right? Because we're already at like 250 bar, 250 times atmospheric pressure, and you want to pump twice as fast. Your pressure is going to go up to more than 500. I guarantee it. You know, so that is why we are always on this side of the damn curve on HPLC. So right now, what we really need is the world's greatest plumber. You know, we just need a kick-ass plumber to come around and make us make us a leak-free HPLC that can operate right around down here, right? We just got to go up here just a couple of little bits and we say, okay, we're done. We've hit our optimum, right? And then we can scale back on the pumping rate a little bit and get down here. But for HPLC, we are still up here somewhere. Does that make sense, Casey? Sure. Yeah? Okay. I agree. Solomon. Oh, gosh. Oops. He, he's been on here for an hour and a half already. Poor guy's probably gotten bored and gone to the bathroom. So anyway, so this is just to say that HPLC and UPLC, the difference between HPLC and UPLC is just where you are on this column. Uh, where you are on this curve, right? And HPLC is up here and UPLC is down here, right? So we're getting closer to an optimum, but we really can't, we can't pump that hard yet. So, um, 
but in GC we can. In GC you can go right past the the optimum, right? So you know, let's say we had a choice between pumping it at this speed and pumping at this speed. This is the difference between one and two millimeters per second. If you were running a business, which of those two points would you pick? Um, who should I ask here? Taryn, maybe? Which should I pick? Yes. Yes. Yeah, which, which would you pick? Uh, this point here around one or this point here around two? What's, what's going to be the maybe difference? Around, in, mm -hmm. I was going to say maybe around two, just because there's more that are kind of like averaged around that one. Aha. Uh -huh. that's, that's the right answer, but the wrong reason. So the, the, that, the reason that you would choose two is because your separation happens in half the time. That means you can get twice as many injections done per day. I mean, it's it's sort of a it's sort of a weird technical point, right? But it's it becomes important in separations, you know, because there's something that you know places tend to do over and over, right? So if you could go between here and here, you might want to exceed the optimum just a little bit. There could be a little bit of peak tailing, but you can deal with that, right? Okay, cool. All right. I see that I have exceeded the maximum allowable bullshit session on this. But this is this is important stuff. Okay. Okay. So now let's look at the three terms that make up this uh, Van Diemter equation. Sorry, Dr. Winter. There the is. Oh, Solomon. No problem. No problem. No problem. <laughs> did someone did someone tell you? Text you, hey, he called on yeah. you. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I never call on you, and you're always here like 15 minutes early. It's like always, That's I, I never get to actually start my own meetings. I always have to join them because Solomon is always on. <laughs> I, lo I love it. 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 No problem. No problem. Okay. So, what are the three terms? Uh, multiple path, mass transfer, and longitudinal diffusion. You know, in a word. Okay. So, um, multiple paths, A, what this, and this is, this is a plate height. This is a constant plate height. H is equal to A, right? And the multiple path simply means that in getting from the beginning to the end of column, there are more than one pathways that a solute molecule can take. And therefore, every sol solute molecule takes a slightly different path. And therefore, there is some band broadening associated with any transit of the column. Duh! So A is a constant given a certain column, right? Now, longitudinal diffusion is this hyperbolic one here, right? And um, longitudinal diffusion is worst at low velocity, right? So at low velocity, the longitudinal diffusion term will tend to predominate. And all that means is that um, when we're on the left side here of the graph, when we're on the low velocity side, the, the separation takes, this is a multiple choice quiz, A, a long time, or B, a short time? Answer in, answer in the chat, A or B? Could you repeat long the question? Long or short time? Exactly. So when we're when we're at the left side of this graph here, 
the separation takes a long time or a short time? A short time. Okay, we've got one vote for short. Solomon says long or short? Short. Short, short. Yeah, short time. Okay. Are we wrong? Anybody else have any opinion on this? Well, I just want to. I just want to get a. I just want to get a representative bunch of opinions here, right? Opinions. How about you, Cindy? Do you have an opinion here? When we're on the left side of the graph, the separation takes a long time or a short time. It's one or the other. I think she long. said long in the chat. Okay. Oh, she said long in the chat. I, yeah, Diane says short. Then. I'm outnumbered. I'm saying long. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. A is a. And Nick. A is a long time, right? A is a long time, right? Okay. John Lucas says A. Diane says short. Cindy says long. Nicholas says long. So, um, I am going to go with Nicholas on this one. I know you did. I know you did. Van says it's long. When you're on the left-hand side, it takes a long time because, Van, why? Because the plates. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, Van. Because the plates are small? No, the plate height is long. It's like right, uh, 11 right, right. to like something five. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's not the right reason. What's the right reason, Cindy? I'm looking at linear velocity all the way over on the left. The velocity is slow. Yes. So it's exactly. going to take time for anything exactly. to happen. Exactly. 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 So the answer is long. And the reason, Nicholas, is what? Didn't Cindy just say it? They're going slowly. Yes, they are going slowly. Stuff goes slowly. Good. So if stuff's going slowly and stuff's taking a long time, how will diffusion appear in the bandwidth? Large or small? I would think large just because everything's sitting there diffusing. Mm. Sort of. I'm just tired of you answering. Okay. Casey, what's the answer? <laughs> yeah, what Sandy said, it goes for a long time because it's just sitting there. I love it. Casey just needs some girl support. And then she's brilliant. I just need she to just needs to a Cindy. little support. Oh, I know, just anyway. listen to this. Uh, well, you know, see, you can say that, right? You can say that and she will hear you. <laughs> For some reason, if I say that, she's not going to hear me. Anyway. I won't hear so. it if either of you say it. <laughs> <laughs> saying it. Okay. I'm not going to keep saying it. You got to figure it out for yourself, man. Okay. So <laughs> I guess I'm too mean. But um, so that means that if we go super slow, what's going to predominate in term in determining the bandwidth? And the answer is longitudinal diffusion. Okay. Now, what will now? What's the third term? Mass transfer. That is a term that is multiplied by u. Okay. Are you guys ready for the mall analogy? Okay. I don't care if you're ready. I'm going to give it to you. 
Casey, Roger, Cindy, Jonathan, Solomon, Dylan, Diane, Kareem, Paige, Nicholas, Van, John, Luca, and Taryn all went to the mall. And we are all identical, <laughs> right? We're all the same damn molecule, right? And uh, this mall is full of stores. And we randomly like or don't like the stores, right? Like Nicholas, he likes the sporting goods store. Roger likes the computer store. Van likes the clothing store and other sexist metaphors. And, uh, and as we, 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 we start walking through the mall together as a group of people, right? We start at the, at the west end of Oak Ridge Mall, and we're gonna meet at the east end of Oak Ridge Mall, right? And we say, okay, everybody just go your own way. We're gonna make our way to the east end, and I'll see you when, we, when I see you when we get there, right? We all walk the same speed, and we all have the same sense of urgency about getting out. It's just the same, right? Now, Nicholas, is really into sporting goods. And he spent a long gosh darn time in the, I don't know, there are no sporting goods stores. It, maybe there's a big five or something in the stupid mall, right? And, and, and Van, she found a Macy's. And not only did she like the dresses, but she also liked the, um, what's another sexist metaphor? Maybe I should leave that one behind. <laughs> uh, I don't know, what else do you like? <laughs> she likes something else there, right? And then, and then I don't know what Cindy likes. I do not know what Cindy likes at all. <laughs> but she found a store that she likes. And we all sort of like started going down the mall and we spend some time in the stores. Then we walk out of the store and we walk down the, the hall, right? Then we get to the end of the mall and Solomon gets there first because he's like, ah, what am I doing in a mall? And, you know, I get there about midway because, oh my gosh, I found a good computer, you know? And then like, finally, Taryn and Gianluca comes, come moseying Don down and they spent half an hour in the Radio Shack, half an hour in the Sharper Image and half an hour in the uh, As Seen on TV store. And so they took the longest amount of time, right? So what I'm describing actually is a dispersion in the binding capacity or in the binding rates. It's it's like um, if if um, let's say um, the person who binds the least versus the person who binds the most, right? If there's inhomogeneity, inhomogeneity in the binding sites, and not every binding site is seen by every molecule, right? Then that can produce a lot of band spreading. Does that make sense, Casey? Because you, you might not see your favorite store and you might just blow right through, but then at another time you might see your favorite store. It might take you a long time to get through, you know? So, um, good. I got a nod. That makes my day. I got a nod today. I got a Casey nod. Yes. So, well, skipping the metaphor, couldn't it also um, take a while for the molecules to get through um, due to the size of the molecules as well, and not just the binding? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why does the size not make any difference? Because we're talking about so 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 Jean Luca. I'm just joking around here, basically, but I'm not joking, right? Because like when you talk about molecular size, right? A everything is gosh darn small, right? Everything is super small, right? And then another thing that we're we're talking about here is binding 
the strength of the binding, or the strength of the partitioning, or the strength of the adsorption, or the strength of the ion affinity, or the strength of the other affinity. Um, and what you've mixed into this thing is the idea of size, which really only belongs in size exclusion, right? And the metaphor is really different for size exclusion, right? And I don't want to talk about size exclusion right now. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I knew there was size exclusion. That's why I was asking if it has any. So it's just purely based on the binding sites for this one. Correct. You, you, you knew it. You, so you knew all the while yes. that you were going to completely derail me. Partially, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you knew it. Or you did it anyway. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding around. No. Uh, so yeah. So, but let, if we just stay with this one metaphor of the of the affinity for the molecules for the stationary phase, right? The affinity of the student for the store, right? Now we've got to now we've got to make this more and more generic, right? We've talked about different students and different preferences, right? That might describe separating by student, right? Now, if we're all clones, right? Who should we clone? Maybe let's let's all be. Um, could we all be Nicholas's? Would you object to that, Casey? No. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> No, you're being cloned. <laughs> cool. I want to be Nick for a day. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just 10 minutes, Nicholas. It's just 10 minutes. Let us be you for 10 minutes. We're all going to be Nicholas for 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you for your permission, which we did not need. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just joking around, Nicholas. So, um, so if we're all Nicholas, right, and we all walk down this mall, and... And all the stores are the same. It's a mall full of the same damn store. And we're the same damn person, right? And we spend, on average, two minutes in the store, right? And we're Nicholas, but we're Nicholas slash Dory. Do you guys know who Dory is? Dory is a fish. From what movie, Cindy? Finding Nemo. Yes, we're Nicholas with finding with Dory's memory, with Dory's long-term memory, meaning zero long-term memory, <laughs> right? And so Nicholas, all of us, we're all Nicholas. We're all walking down the mall. All the stores are the same. We walk into a store. We shop and then we walk out, we get bored and we walk out, right? And um, and then we see the next door and say, oh, cool, here's a store. And we walk in, it's the same store, but we don't remember, right? And we walk out, right? And we, every time we walk in, we spend about two minutes, right? So now, now we're going to put Nicholas, put ourselves, our Nicholases, onto um, segways. Because segways are suitable transportation for the mall. Right? Now, a whole bunch of uh, 15 Nicholases are going into the most boring mall in the country with the same store. And now all 15 Nicholases are on segways, right? And because they're on segways, they go pretty damn fast, right? And now some Nicholases visit three stores. They spend a total of six minutes in the stationary phase. Some Nicholases only visit two stores they spend four minutes and some Nicholas's only 
spend only visit one store. It's because of the damn Segway, right? Because it goes so fast, they blow past the stores. Right? This is crucial. Right? So now, what does what effect does that have on the bunching of the Nicholases as they leave the mall? Nicholas, do you have any opinion on this? I'll be more spread out. Oh, he says that it, it breaks your heart, right? The way he says that, he says, I'll be all spread out. Nicholas. <laughs> what do you think, Casey? I agree. Okay, that's safe. How about you, Cindy? Make it three. Okay, excellent. So I We're kind of agree. Nick, we all think the same. Right, that's right. We're all Nicholas, so we all think the same. So naturally, we have the same conclusion. Good. I'm glad I chose Nicholas. So, um, so basically, this is the same, right? Because some of the Nicholases will have visited stores, some will not, right? And that is the consequence of traveling at a speed that does not allow you to establish equilibrium with every store. So it's equilibrium, an equilibrium constant is always the ratio of two rates, a forward weight rate and a reverse rate. Does that make sense? Right, so a rate and, and when rates are slow, you know, it's, it's entirely possible for a rate to be so slow that in a given five minute interval, nothing happens, you know? There's an excellent example in the atmosphere, right? Which is why does nitrogen and oxygen, why don't they make NOx just spontaneously? Right? Because there's no rate the rate of that reaction is really slow. Thank God, right? Because we don't want to be breathing NOx. But the rate of that reaction is really slow. So it's possible then, when we're talking about these retention mechanisms, that the rate of a given reaction could be slow relative to the transit time of a molecule. Relative to the say the number of times a molecule comes close to crossing the barrier of the interface. Say, what if it's partitioning, it'll go from the aqueous to the stationary phase, from the mobile to the stationary phase, right? So if the rate at which you're eluding is much greater than the rate at which you can partition, then you will experience band broadening. And it won't be the normal type, it'll probably be tailing. But we can discuss that a little bit more maybe next time. But um, uh, let's see. So I think I pretty much beat this horse to death. Does anybody disagree with that? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna leave this horse then. Shall we leave this dead horse, Nicholas? Yeah. <laughs> That's clear. Okay, we'll leave this dead horse. All right, so now we know why there's an optimum in the flow rate, right? So when we get to that problem on the final, which will be on the final. We're gonna know that the flow rate has an optimum, right? And if we plot it as plate height versus linear velocity, it will be a minimum. Excellent. 
there's longitudinal diffusion. And you know, the equations don't really matter. I'm not gonna test on the equations. There's, now here's the mass transfer one, right? This has like little horizontal or little vertical lines. And this one has these arcing lines, right? So anyway, that's one way to say it. And there's all kinds of rates and stuff like that. Oh, come on. Give us a break, right? Multiple flow paths. I kind of like this one. There's one which somehow goes almost completely straight through this column. And it elutes at a short time, right? Could you guys do this on an exam? If I gave you, if I gave you a graph like this, but there's no green line, could you draw the green line in with a pencil? Would you I'm going to do it. About, oh. I'm going to do it. Yes, Kareem, I'm going to do it. What would you tell so us what, should what I the tell three you about? components are? They're the same. They're the same damn molecule. But they're passing at different areas? They are passing at different rates. Yeah, they're passing at different average linear velocity. But one gets there sh in a shorter time than three. How is this possible? Is it just okay. like an absolute so view? It's just what it says here. It's just like the, it just because what can happen will happen, right? It's Murphy's law. It's like Newton's law, but it's Murphy's law. What can happen will happen. Who Wait, thinks that that's a fundamental scientific? Go wrong, Dr. Taylor, wasn't it? It will go wrong. Can go wrong. It will go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. 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 I've simply modified Murphy's law to to include to exclude the idea of good and bad. Right? <laughs> what can happen will happen, good or bad. <laughs> right? Right? So. If this guy can get through in a nearly straight line, it will, right? Given enough time, enough possibilities, whatever, it's gonna do that, right? You know, an average one, a more tortuous pathway, they're all gonna happen, right? So now I've got two good ideas for the final. One of them is gonna have you drawing lines and I'm gonna have to study this, right? And I'm gonna have to study to see to make sure that when you draw these lines, you make sure that the lines don't go inside the, don't go inside the uh, little, little rocks, right? They have to go around the rocks. They can't go through the rocks. Are you gonna do that online? Can you handle me? <laughs> No, I no. So so I, I've been planning. I've been planning the final, and I have not been communicating this to you, right? But my plan right now is to. Um, shit, I don't know what to do. I was thinking about like something where I, like I email it to you the night before, right? And then you print it out and you fill it in, and then you email it back. So we would have one day to, like, that whole next day to do it? Yeah. Doesn't really work, does <laughs> it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't really work, because then, you know, Fook, he's going to take amphetamines and he's going to be up all night and then the next day he's going to be all flipped out poor fuck no he's probably not going to take drugs actually but he'll get too anxious anxious about it and then he's then he'll be too super tired the next day 
Don't do that to Fook. <sighs> Don't, I'm not going to do that to Fook. Dan, do you ever see Fook? I don't know why I'm picking on you. Do you ever see Fook? K Casey, do you ever see Fook? In person? Communicate with him? Yeah, we yeah, text. Yeah, or like, you text, okay. So you can tell him that I brought him up in lecture as an example of how not to study for the final, which is get too anxious. Don't do that for him. Do not get too anxious, okay? <laughs> Do not get too anxious. I'll tell him that. And, and also tell him that if I've been in office hours for an hour and 10 minutes, it's not the right time to chime in when I'm hanging up. <laughs> I just blew past him because I was tired. Come on. Folks. He has physical chemistry like right during office hours. So I know that's why he can't come. Oh, I see, I see. That's why I put them there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually didn't know that, but that's a good point. I'll have to move them, maybe. Do maybe, you just coordinate maybe with not. all the other professors to see when their classes are? Yeah. <laughs> place your office hours there. Exactly, exactly, exactly. We try to make office hours and class hours completely overlap. Evil. So nobody can go, I know. But clever, right? No. It's evil genius. It's evil genius. Ah! That explains it. That's why you I gotta have give like us three something professors here. with the same office hours this semester. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out how to give you guys this exam. And like my son, he, he tells me he's taken a, a discrete math class at San Jose City. And he says he has an old school teacher, right? And his old school teacher literally emails them the exam and they print it out and they fill it out and then they scan it and they send it back somehow. And then he takes forever to grade it. But I'm thinking maybe we could do something like that. Maybe. I just don't maybe. like exams don't where you have to scan things back into people just because I always find like every time that happens, I have some massive issue where I can't scan it in. I know there was one OCHEM exam that didn't actually get sent over to my I professor know. somehow. Uh, I know, 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 I know. It sucks. It sucks. Everything about this sucks. But I mean, it's like physically dragging your body in to take an exam or taking it online. It's like they're both sort of like not necessarily ideal, but physically dragging your body in is <laughs> has more support. So I haven't figured it out yet, but I do want to make you draw this picture. I do want to make you draw the squiggly lines do I have because to draw that is so screen? beautiful. No, no, I'll draw the rocks for you. I will draw the rocks. I'll draw the rocks in the tube. I'll even draw the, um, I'll draw everything except the lines, right? The lines and then these, and these boobles here where they connect to this guy, right? You have to connect. What I'll do is um, I'll say, illustrate a range of flow paths, right? And the only way to get it wrong will be to give a long flow path corresponding to a short time. That will be wrong. Or a short flow path corresponding to a long time. That would be a wrong. Or there's many creative ways to be wrong such as going all the way forward and then all the way back and then all the way forward again. That would be wrong on so many levels that I wouldn't even try to think about it. But anything that can happen will happen. But anything that can happen, well, okay, fine. Yeah, what if it was a maze, Dr. Carroll? <laughs> what if you had like the rocks and then like a treasure in the My middle? It kind of is a maze, right? But there's this flow, you know? There's a mass flow through the maze, right? So if 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 we were to turn it on and get people like on average halfway and then turn it off, then all those possibilities would happen, you know? Given time, given enough time, right? Because there's a random walk, everything's randomly walking, you know? 
But if the things are flowing through, then everything within reason that can happen will happen, you know? And it's an interesting thing right here because everything that can happen will happen is a classical idea, right? It's divorced from the idea of individual molecules, right? And the idea, so when you have enough molecules, then it's like everything that can happen does happen, right? It's not exactly that, but it's more like that. And then eventually it's so much like that that you can't tell them apart, right? And that's when you get like, instead of like a spike, a spike, and a spike, you get a smooth curve coming out of this thing, right? Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. It's just interesting because there's examples of this cropping up. So you have yet again wasted another hour and 40 minutes in Chem 155. And I am very grateful. And I hope that you take away from this uh, an increased appreciation of the Van Diemter curve, right? Because now you know everything basically that goes into separation. You know. Yeah, Dr. Tara, I appreciate the the Van Dieter curve. Um, but yes. can we spend like the last week before the final doing review? The last week? An entire week? Uh, well, that means I've got to remember way, actually, all this crap. You know, there's. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> that's a bummer, huh? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's not like we have to or anything. <laughs> True. True enough. Uh, I'll spend at least the last day. <sighs> hate doing that. Okay. Yeah, that's... Uh, well, yeah, but... <laughs> we I mean, need to know the thing about it is... The, the thing about it is, like... Yeah, so probably what I should try to do... See, what I've done in the past is I just... I just give everybody every exam, you know? Just, and then I rewrite the stupid exam every stupid semester. But I have a large database of problems that I can select from and make maybe make a little change here and there. And that works. But now I've got this new high tech kind of stupid book and everything that I don't know if that's going to work. I think so, Kareem is getting at, Professor. Yes. Is that a review would help us know exactly what's going to be on the final versus what was on midterm one? Oh, yeah. And okay. So, so like, to help oh, us yeah, study yeah, 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 exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay. So I'll do that. I'll do that. But, but there will be no... It's, it's going to be a second midterm. It's not going to be a final. I've already decided that, right? And that is based on tons of experience. And the experience is thus, right? In the past, I've always made a two-part final. That means I've written a second midterm. Actually, easier than the first midterm. And I've given people a chance to resurrect based on that second midterm. And very rarely does someone get a better score on the final than they did on the midterm. Very rarely. So I'm not going to do that again. Never again. We had the midterm. Then could we cover we had... the second half? Yes. That's what we're going to do. We're going to cover from the midterm to the end on the final. And it will just be the length of a normal midterm. So there's two exams in this class, a midterm and another midterm. The first half and the second half. There's going to be no exam that covers the whole class. So, um, so will the review just encompass that second half of the semester? Yes. Yes, yes. And and we can we can sort of review a little bit over the over the second half. And uh, again, the um, 
The final is not cumulative. That's correct, Diane. The final is not cumulative. The final is second half of the course only. So yes. This is I think the happen. final is on May 25th. Let me confirm this. That's what I have. Tuesday the 25th and it's scheduled for 7.15 to 9.30. If we're doing it. Isn't that a lovely like time? time. It, isn't that a, that, that ac, that's what I have for the final date and time. And I think that is just such a lovely time. Disagree. Oh, God. That's going to be my I second told... final at 7.15 this semester. Oh, God. I, see, that's what I'm thinking about is like maybe I should maybe I should give you guys like plenty of time. I mean, this is what I'm thinking is like making it like a take-home experience where you just have a couple days. And that way I can make every exam slightly unique, you know, a little bit like the homework's unique. Please not like that yes. last homework. <laughs> no, please, Dr. No. Earl, please no. No, no, no. I promise not to make it as hard as the last homework. And you'll notice I haven't assigned homework for this last chapter because it's all qualitative. It's all going to be qualitative. I don't believe in quantitative junk for separations. Nobody uses it. You know, so, um, so I'm strongly considering something that I give you a couple days to, to complete. That way, uh, Taryn, you can try and you can scan it, you know, you can take pictures of it with your phone or whatever and upload them. And I know it's can be a little bit of a pain, but it shouldn't be too bad if you have time, you know? Yeah, theoretically, sometime within a couple of days, you should figure out how to get your scanner working again, so. Yeah, I, I, I hope so. It. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, it's, it's more work for me, you know, but, but I really, I feel funny about, because, you know, when we have the exam and everybody's doing it, I think, you know, I can't watch you guys while you're doing your exam. Nobody even turns their camera on during lecture. I mean, just Casey and Cindy, they're the only people. I love it, but I can't do it. You know, I can't just like, keeping Tom everybody you know it's like weird so I I use the stupid lockdown browser but that doesn't anybody can take a picture of their phone text it to their buddy it's easy so I don't really know what to do you know to make the exams more equitable it's like so I'm thinking of maybe just like making I can I can do some clever shit with mail merge and I can make some variation in the problems. Anyway, I'll think about it. I think if but, there was like variation, but, but we had a few days to do it, it would be okay. Yeah, that, that, that might work then. Like might we work. could maybe have the final due at the final time, but maybe have that weekend to work on it since it's due on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't want to screw people up though. I don't want to keep them up all night. I don't think you should, but I also wanted to ask if that's the way that we're going to do it. Will like, will you have the Dropbox available the whole time or do you want us to submit it during that like two hour time frame? No, I'd have it open. I, I'll just collect it by email or something like that, you know? You know, because, um, and then I'll give you like a receipt, like I got your, you know, when I get it, I can give you like a receipt for it. I can get it, I can check, make sure it's complete and then say, I got your completed exam, you know? And that way, you know, if I give you that receipt and I say, oh, I didn't get an exam, well, then you can come back and hit me over the head. How does that sound? I like it. I was gonna say, that's not, that's not too bad, honestly. I don't like doing multiple choice math. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I really don't like multiple choice either. I mean, it, it, it tests like, 
it tests at a really weird level, you know? It tests you sort of at a high level, but it's with these clever word tricks. And it's like, that's not how humans work. That's not how we communicate, you know? That's not how we express ourselves in daily life, you know? We don't like say, oh, hey, nice to see you in lab today. Are you A, happy or B, sad? You know, it's like, screw you. <laughs> you know? I think, I think the hard part too is like um, that it's like we can get partial credit for like our math being correct, even if our math right. is wrong, but it's like, right. Fuck up right, it's right, like right, 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 right. And I can give you partial credit for stuff, right, exactly. And I just, I, you know, it's, it's easy to do the other way. Cause I just like set it and forget it. You know, you guys do what you do. I don't even have to think about it. Right. But if I, you know, and so I don't really like it, but I can look at them, you know, and I can see, you know, if somebody's going off the wrong direction or something, it's real, it's real clear. So anyway, good. More thoughts, more good thoughts. Uh, okay. So, Okay, so the final date is, um, it is uh, May 25th at 7.15, 7.15 to 9.45 or to 9.30. That's the actual date and time of the final. So, you know, worst case scenario, we'll do it exactly then. All right. Okay, guys. I will see you all very soon. Bye, thank, thank you, you for your attention. Bye.